let's look at scaling graphs of sine and cosine functions, vertical shrinking and stretching. So in the same coordinate plane, we're going to sketch the graph of each function. And we could sketch two periods um, just to kind of get a little bit of practice. So y equals 1 half cosine of x. Let's graph that. So we know the period is 2 pi. And then um, label the x-axis. So 2 pi, half of 2 pi is pi. Half of pi is pi over 2. Then this is 3 pi over 2. Then pi, 2 pi, this is 3 pi. This will be 4 pi. Then 3 pi, 5 pi over 2, and 7 pi over 2. So I'll make this a half. This is a half. Negative a half. And then vertically stretching all the way to 3 will be up here and here for our other graph. So let's do half cosine of x. Cosine starts here at the top. And then it goes down to pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So that's one full period, right, from 0 to 2 pi. Then it just repeats. So this is a half. So it just changes it from 1 to a half as our minimum and maximum, um, 1 half and negative a half. Then at 3, we're going to start all the way at the top, and then down, down, up, up. So that's a full period, and then repeat. And that's it. So try this example. Graph sine, both uh, one-third sine of x and y equals three sine x on the same plane. Okay, so if you tried it out, you would have gotten these two graphs. And so you can really tell that this is a vertical shrink. It's a lot smaller versus this, which is very tall. So remember that when you have a negative in front, it's a reflection of the axis of the graph of y equals f of x. And so, for example, sine normally looks like this. So for the reflection, it would go the other direction. It would go down first and then up and then over. For cosine, it would the normal one starts at the top. And then for the reflection, it would start at the bottom instead and go over. Let's talk about the period of sine and cosine functions. Let b be a positive real number. The period of y equals a sine b of x and y equals a sine cosine bx is given by period equals 2 pi over b. So we know when, when b is between 0 and 1, the period is greater than 2 pi. That's our horizontal stretch. Then when b is greater than 1, the period is less than 2 pi. So therefore, that is a horizontal shrink. So when b is negative, uh, what we need to do is that we're going to rewrite the function using the identity. That sine of negative x is going to be negative sine of x. Or remember that cosine of negative x is just going to be positive cosine of x, right? Because that's even and then sine is odd. So you'll have to rewrite that if you see a negative in the inside. So let's try this example, scaling um, horizontally uh, by stretching. So we have y equals sine of x over 2. So our b value is a half, OK? So what we're going to do is the period, remember the period equals 2 pi over whatever b is. So it's 2 pi over a half. That's going to equal 4 pi. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and uh, write it out first. So a full period is 4 pi, so I'm just going to do one period, 4 pi. Half of 4 pi is 2 pi. Half of 2 pi is pi. And then this last one is just a 3 pi. Then the amplitude is 1 and negative 1. We're graphing sine. So now we start at 0. This is pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. And there's our graph. 
So try this example here, graph y equals cosine of x over 3. So we tried this out. The period is 6 pi. So you start by labeling 6 pi here, then half of 6 pi is 3 pi, then half of 3 pi is 3 pi over 2. Now the challenging part is probably trying to get this third one here. So again, what you do is you take this 3 pi over 2, add it, 3 pi over 2, that gets you to here. So that should be 3 pi. So 6 pi over 2 is definitely 3 pi. So then you add another 3 pi over 2, and that'll get you this third label here. So that's 9 pi over 2. And then maybe there's other ways that you can figure it out, but that's one way that you could figure out how to label that period.